Hi guys and welcome to today's video on simplifying ratios, building on the work that we have been doing previously. So in my last video I introduced ratios. It sounds a bit weird really, doesn't it? How did I introduce it? Hello, uh, this is ratio. And you are? No. Anyway, whole new discussion. Um, so we looked at the idea of what a ratio was, how to express it, the colon, not the, side, the stuff inside your body, um, and basically how to simplify them and uh, sort of uh, similar ratios or equivalent ratios. We're going to dive a little bit deeper here with simplifying ratios because it's absolutely important to be able to do so. Now, my name is Darren, Maths Guru, and it's really good to see you. If you haven't already done so, there's a little doohickey in the corner. If you can do me the honor of clicking that and subscribing, I would be deeply grateful. I don't have many subscribers and I'm not here to get, you know, millions. What I'm here to get is, well, 12 actually, 12 people who watch these videos. So maybe you'll click it. You'll just let me know you're watching. I'm never going to be rich and I'm never going to be famous. But your help just to let me keep doing this is greatly appreciated. And above is maskguru.com where I have my own website, where all these videos are searchable and organized by textbook and chapter and have downloadable notes, okay? I can't be any more helpful than that, can I? All right, so simplifying ratios. We are dealing with and continuing with what we did our last lesson. Yes, so let's recap because recap's really important. All right, now we had some worked examples and we decided the order in which we wrote ratios was really, really important. So in this situation, we wanted shaded followed by unshaded. And by that, we just wanted to count how many shaded there were and how many unshaded there were. So I'm gonna write shaded and unshaded. And this one title is gonna apply for all of the questions below. So how many shaded were there there? One, how many unshaded? Two. So that meant for every one shaded, there were two unshaded. Let's scroll up and do this one here. How many shaded were there? Five, dot, dot, four. And then if we go down to here, if I remember rightly, there was three to seven. Now what we notice with all of those numbers on the screen at the moment is that nothing can divide into one and two. Nothing can divide into five and four, and nothing can divide into three and seven to take it into a simpler form. And with ratios, we generally want to try and make it simpler if we can. If we look at these two examples, I think something different is going to happen. So again, what are we going to do? Shaded to unshaded. And again, that one title is now going to apply to both these questions. Shaded, one, two, three, four, five shaded to how many unshaded? five unshaded. Now, this situation, I can actually cancel this down. Why? Because I can see that five and five can both be divided by five. So actually canceling this down, this ratio is the same as one to one. Now, understanding what ratios means is again important. It means for every one shaded square, there's one unshaded. So here is a shaded, here is an unshaded. Okay, that matches up. Here is a shaded, here is an unshaded, yep. Here is a shaded, here is an unshaded, shaded, unshaded, shaded, and unshaded. Oh, we did that in red. But the point of it was there, if I was now going to draw a different diagram using the same ratio, so if I was now going to do, oh, let's just make it easy with four squares, for every one shaded, there's got to be one unshaded, so I'll shade one, leave one, shade one, leave one. So we still have the same ratio there. It's just a different size. What about the next one? What do we have here? Two shaded to four unshaded. And again, I can see that this can cancel down to one to two. That means for every one shaded, there are two unshaded. One shaded, there are two unshaded. Love, love, love this ratio. Now, basically, where you can simplify ratios, you should, and they're not always going to give you diagrams. So you have 7 dot dot 21, and sadly, this comes down to your times tables and how good you are at your times tables. What number goes into 7 and 21? Well, to be honest with you, 7. So I'm going to divide both of those sides by 7, and we're going to get 1 to 3, and that is the same ratio. Now, we must keep the ratio in the same order. What about 450 to 200? Well, the first thing I know is they're both end with a zero, so I'm actually going to divide those by 10. That gives me 45 to 20. That is exactly the same ratio because I've divided both sides by 10. And again, now I look at those and I go, well, both of those can divide by five. So five's going to that nine times, and five's going to that four times, and nine to four would be my final ratio. Now, some people turn around and say, well, couldn't I just divide straight away by 50? Absolutely, divide both of those by 50. And you will also, oops, he says, writing 90, 
50 and that line again. And absolutely, you'll go straight to nine to four. It just depends how good your times tables are. Oh, then we get to those dreaded, dreaded fractions. Now, how do we do this? Well, there's lots of ways of doing this. The way I teach this is we look at three fifths to one half. Now at the moment, they don't have the same bottom number. And so what I can do is I can multiply both sides by 10, absolutely. Now, why did I do that? Because five times two is 10. Now, if I multiply this side by 10, oh, let's try that in red. If I multiply this side by 10, I have three on five and a half times 10 as well. So if I turn those into fractions now, can I do some cross canceling? Yes, I can. Five goes into there once and five goes into there twice and two goes into there once and two goes into there five times. So if we now look, I've got two times three on the top, which is six. I've got one times one on the bottom, which is one. I'm going to leave it at that. What do I have on the top here? I've got one times five, which is five and one times one on the bottom. And ladies and gentlemen, there you go, six to five. Now I think this is freaking awesome. Let's now do two thirds and one and one quarter, sorry, two and one third and one and one quarter. Now I always turn the thing top heavy or improper first. So I know two threes to six plus one is seven on three and that becomes five on four. Looking at these bottom numbers, what is the lowest common multiple of those? What number does the lowest number they both go into? It absolutely happens to be 12. So I'm gonna do 12 times seven on three and five on four times 12. Make those 12 on one, why? Because we can make our uh, whole numbers into fractions. Cross, cancel, three goes into there once, three goes into there four times, four goes into there once, Four goes into there three times and now we look at the fact that we've got four times seven on the top five times three on the top four times seven is seven fourteen twenty one twenty eight five times three is fifteen and there ladies and gentlemen is my ratio now different units are a massive trick we're going to do this remember maths is tricking you yes it's nice that we know you can do the maths but we're absolutely going to trick you if we can. Now, what do you notice here? Ratio of four millimeters to two centimeters. Now, when we have ratios, you always try and make it the smallest value first. And if you remember, there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter. So if I've got four millimeters, colon, two centimeters, they are different units. So I'm now going to write four millimeters to 20 millimeters. I don't really need the millimeters anymore because they're now the same unit. So divide both sides of that by four. Why? Because four goes into four and four goes into 20 it gives me one, two, five. So the ratio of four millimeters to two centimeters is the same as one millimeter to five millimeters. Yay! Uh, what about 25 minutes to two hours? Well, two hours is 120 minutes. We're not going to write the, the, that, I'm going to write colon because it wants a ratio. We don't need the minutes anymore, so that's going to be 25 to 120. What goes into both of those? Well, five. Five goes into there five times. Five goes into there 25 times. And again, I can cancel that down to one to five. And lo and behold, it is the same ratio. And there we go, guys. Simplifying ratios. We are done with this lesson. Nice and short. Eight to nine minutes long. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully it's been useful. Um, make sure those units are the same. Make sure that you know your times tables and make sure you get the ratios in the right order and nothing can go wrong. That fraction stuff's a little bit tricky. But again, if you've watched the previous videos, you know what you're doing. Do me a favor, guys. Leave me a comment below if you enjoyed the video. Greatly appreciate it if you could. If you haven't already done so, subscribe and be my 12th subscriber. Greatly appreciate it again. Not here to be rich or famous. Just want to know that people are watching. That's literally the reason. I love doing this, but just love to know that people are watching. Otherwise, I'll look forward to seeing you maybe in a different video. You take care of yourself. I'll see you again soon.